Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Sopal in the studio today. And today we are continuing work on the vintage collage digital kit that I put together and shared a couple of videos ago. I've prepared a journal using those digitals. And then when I, after I did the cover, which was made from a recycled book cover, uh, I thought it would only be a couple days till I would share with you again, but I ended up getting carried away as usual. But I have worked on this and I wanted to share where I'm at again for beginners. And of course, this one is starting to turn into another ephemera digital kit. So I wanted to go ahead and share where I'm at so far. I'll put the playlist for this down below in the description along with some other links that I'm going to probably be referring to in this because I did use some other digital kits. So I want to share those with you too. Maybe to get started, I had made the book cover and I had left off where I wanted to do some work on a spine, a decorative spine cover using that some rusted scrim that I had and then a vintage doily, but I wanted to do some embellishing on it. So I'm still not quite ready to attach it, so I'm not gonna do that today. It's gonna to go like this. I just, I wanted to keep it kind of simple. So I just did some embroidery, slow stitching, and a little bit of beads, and just kind of simple, but wanted to add some of the colors that you're gonna find inside the book. And the reason I am not wanting to attach it yet is because I the way that it was shaped, it had this kind of it was had a definite top and bottom. And so the way my design is, it's kind of plain up here. So I was thinking this would be a perfect spot to maybe attach a little ring and then a little tassel um, with some beads and maybe some vintage um, jewelry that I've taken apart or I find a brooch or something. And I haven't looked through my stuff for that yet. So um, I want to wait because I might want to do that before I glue it down. So I'm going to wait on that, but that gives you a sneak peek of what I have done with just some little beads and some little embroidery. So we're going to put that aside for now. And then the other thing that I had uh, mentioned in the last video when I showed, I had showed the digital kit and then I had showed some things that I ended up using putting my book together and mentioned that I might put together another kit with all the extras, and that's what I'm working on now. So when I put this cover together, I had mentioned that I had printed some fabric. So I went ahead and did that so that you could see the whole sheet. This will be in the next kit. Uh, it's just with one of my fresco backgrounds, and then to one side, I added this pattern, and that's what I used to attach my spine if you did not see the last video. So there, this piece and then this, uh, can just be for another project or something uh, or a spine it would be a nice width if I wanted to use that for my spine cover it's actually kind of the perfect perfect size and color and everything for this project so that actually could look really good if I didn't want to put the decorative one on so if you've never watched my videos on printing on fabric it's really super easy there's lots of ways to do it and lots of videos out there um, but if you have not done it, the, the way that I like to do it is I take just some cotton muslin fabric, just some regular weight uh, fabric, and then this is a sticker sheet. And it's a full, it's a full sticker sheet that is, the, the back is, is one solid piece also. I'll put the link for this. This is just, I can, you can buy these in large quantities. Um, and so this is just an empty, was an empty box from my last box. And what I do is I prepare some ahead with fabric on them so that they're always ready when I want a quick print piece of fabric. And to do that, you just uh, uh, take the sticker backing off and then you have your piece of fabric ironed out and it's you, you're going to have it cut a little bit bigger than your eight and a half by 11. And then just stick that down to your fabric and make sure all the, you know, there's no bubbles or anything in it. And then you're just going to trim around the edges. It's easier from the back side. Um, just trim around so that uh, it's the size of the paper. And then you want to make sure that you pull these and cut these off before you put it through your printer. And then I just use my rear my rear feeder, it's just easier. I pop, plop that in. Um, in my case, I'm printing with the fabric side up because it's going through my rear feeder. If I put it in a tray, then you would usually have it uh, face side down. And then you just print it through. I just do it on a regular paper setting. 
and then you get your printed fabric. So that I'm gonna include, you can also print that on paper if you want. The other thing that I had printed, um, I had done it on rice paper, was I had made a bunch of washi tapes on rice paper, and then I ran them through my Xyron sticker maker, and that's why they're on this sticker backing. That sheet is, I, I didn't have it to show in the full sheet because I had already cut it apart, but this is the sheet that I put together. Um, this one I printed on Avery, um, just some uh, sticker project paper. It's eight and a half by 11, glossy clear. Um, I'll put a link for that too. The number is 4397 um, is, is this one. This one only, uh, it says it's for laser and inkjet. It only comes seven sheets, you know, per package. Um, so I won't, you know, use a ton of it, but uh, I thought that might be a fun way uh, to get this onto a sticker and just make it super easy. Um, so, you know, it just peels off. And I, you can see uh, they're all kind of, I've made them a little more sheer uh, than they're solid. They're, the, the opacity I changed because I want you to see through, you know, kind of the next thing. It's just a subtle one. So I may make one where I bump the color up darker too and just do some different ones just so you have an option. But again, this is what I'm working on for the next kit that's not ready yet. But um, so I might do two of these uh, with color variation uh, for the washi tape. And then I also had mentioned that I had this uh, end paper that I used. And so you can see mine is a little larger. I wanted to print it out the size of the original book so that you could see. That way, if your book is smaller, I'm gonna I'm gonna list it this way. Uh, if your book is smaller, you can actually have this whole finished edge if you want, um, and that's kind of you know a little bit smaller than my book. But you can enlarge it to to fit your page also, and that's what I did here. So that way, you have some um, options for size too. So I'm gonna include that. And then the other thing is I started making um, some of my own ephemera sheets. There's actually a third one here. Um, and I've printed these on to just some coffee and tea stain papers because that way uh, you, you get whatever distressing you had on your paper also and then it makes each one individual every time you print it out. This one is actually a lot darker than this one was on a lighter piece of paper of tea stained paper, but you can see the color difference. And that's just um, because my original paper was darker in this case. So I'm gonna have these available. I've just been kind of tweaking them as I go. Um, what I wanted these to be are, you know, little cards you can cut out in different sizes and then use them uh, just for pieces that you'll see that I've used in here for card backing, you know, for some um, lines, for some writing on the back sides of, of journal cards and that sort of thing. So, so far I have these three um, and I'll show you how, see there's some more lined paper, um, how, I, how I'm using them in my journal. So when I started doing the inside and thinking about it, one of the things I knew I was going to do and which I did was I printed out um, more of my, I had some of my sheets that were my practice ones when I was playing around, uh, some of the rejects, you know, I ended up maybe changing some things as I went. I printed out some of those. Now I've used a lot of them, so they're not sitting here. Um, but I printed out some of my, uh, the sheets that I used for the journal pages so that I could cut them up for cards. Some of them I printed out just on regular, you know, plain tea stained paper, which I like to use. You might just use white copy paper. And, and then some I, I put on some thicker card stock because maybe I knew I wanted them to be cards and to make them a little thicker, uh, I could add some book page to the back or some lined paper if they're gonna be journal cards or that sort of thing. But having them also available to yourself on some thicker paper is nice for belly bands and that sort of thing. If you've just printed out on thin paper, that's fine too, because you can um, double it up, like I said, with old book page or something on the back side, especially if you're not going to see it, just scratch paper, just to get it to the thickness that you want. So I did that, and then I, you know, I kind of grabbed um, some of my, this is just kind of a messy pile here, um, just some different things. This is some print, something I had printed on rice paper 
These are some digitals from uh, Roxy Creations, the other kits that I had been using in, in her, um, from her kits, the French Chateau. When I did these, I, I really, one of the things I loved about her kits was I loved that kind of color palette. It, there's a lot of different color in it. And so I, I, I thought it would complement the ones that I made nicely. And then that way, you know, it's the same with your, your collection that you have. You might have some other digital kits that coordinate nicely with these. Um, and then it, it kind of makes your book individual to someone else's. So these are the, you know, just some different things I'm cutting apart and, you know, from my practice um, of uh, when I was creating my few pages that I have so far. So I've taken her ephemera kit, um, you know, her, she's got like three different ones. This is from uh, Foxy, um, Tracy Fox. This is one of her uh, pieces and, you know, just some different pieces that I hadn't used uh, that, that are maybe cut apart, but I, I kind of go through every page that I'm working on and just look and see if there's anything that I like for that page. So I've got a, a variety of things here and then I have um, some smaller scraps. I had a thing with some already pre-cut cards from Tim Holtz, you know, that might work. Or you can do your own, you know, just and do a little collage on them. One of the things that I had have started kind of doing recently was maybe making up, uh, there's videos that I've done for these, making up some little tags and pockets and things ahead. If you're using all the same sort of color palette, you might have some already finished um, from, you know, mass making things that you can use in your journal. I'm kind of trying, just trying to start doing that. A little bit more um, I keep another little drawer that has um, these are some uh, Tim Holtz pieces that were cut from 12 by 12 sheets that I just you know thought would be cute little booklets maybe little notepads that I put into journals so I have some of these I've made some into the shapes uh, some little file folder pockets and that sort of thing so I kind of just grabbed um, these are again some little file folders you know, that might be cute to use. So I just kind of grabbed this drawer. I had some tags. These were from um, Tracy Fox. Some of her tags that are already kind of pre-done um, that I've already put some lined paper on the back. And then just using those as bases. I actually did use th this one in my journal and I wasn't wild about this holly kind of leaf thing. So I, I just covered up with collage. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I've done. But if you grab, if you have different um, things that you've started, cards already, or at least some backgrounds cut out, um, that can kind of get you going. Uh, but, you know, I'm thinking in the end, um, just with the journal kit that I showed already, that with the digitals that we use to make the folios, just using that kit and even the the ones that I'm adding in here will be enough things to, you know, finish up the inside of this of this journal. So I'm going to kind of go through, if you're brand new, and show you the kinds of things. Um, I tried to put a nice variety in here of the different types of things that you might want to add to your journal. This is kind of the fun part for me. Um, I'm not really so much a, a note taker, journal writer um, type person, but I do like to cut quotes and that sort of thing and, and, you know, notes here or there. So for me, the fun part is adding all the pockets and flips and tucks and all that sort of thing. So this one's going to end up being sold in that sort of shape where I'm going to leave a lot of partially finished, um, and include bits and pieces that, uh, the end user can continue the decorating in their own way and also do the journaling and collage on pages and that sort of thing. So hopefully there's going to be lots of things in this. So when I started out this one, I started just on the first page. Since then, I've been kind of bouncing around inside, but I knew on that front cover, uh, which was just this plain background, that I wanted to do some sort of pocket so that it would be kind of like a library pocket. And all I did was I took one of my envelopes that I had printed using my digital kit and cut it in half, did a little notch um, that you'd use with a circle punch. And you can use different sizes if you've, if um, this is kind of one tool 
that you might want to have if you're just starting out. Now, I'm going to show you a few different tools, and I'll put them down below in the description, and I'll kind of say which ones are my, you know, absolute must, because they're ones that I might use in everything. So a circle punch, it could be any size. I have a few sizes, but you might just pick, you know, one of these as an inch and an inch and a half or three quarters of an inch or whatever. Um, because they're nice not only to do for circles, but to do your little notches. So a little circle punch is handy to have. And then all I did was line this with book page. Uh, and I did add a piece of my little music washi tape that was done on the rice paper. This little embellishment is uh, part of my new kit, that little piece. Uh, and then I just went ahead with my sewing machine, and you don't have to do this part, but I just like having that touch, is I just used, um, I think the color of thread I use is called praline, uh, and it's just kind of a sepia, antique -y color and then just stitched around, and then used, of course, my favorite distressed uh, oxide vintage photo, and, and just aged that around. I keep two of these on my table at all times. Vintage photo is the lighter color that I use, and then I also have ground espresso. Walnut stain is also another one, and, and I have it, but these two I just happen to have on my table. This one's darker, so sometimes you'll see I'll use the lighter one, I'll use the lighter one first, and if that's not dark enough to make whatever I want to pop off the page, then I'll use the, the darker one, maybe just adding it just on the edges. So a pocket on the front, and then I wanted to do a tag. This one was with that tag that I just showed from Tracy Fox. And then this is just a Tim Holtz already um, cut out little rose. Uh, so I didn't add too much. I think there's a little bit of book page behind that, and then a piece of lace. And that I just uh, stuck down there. So just a couple things, and then I put a little eyelet here that you you know can do or not do. I've shown that it's just another little finishing touch. So a crop a dial. I did not purchase one of these until you know I had been doing this for a, a bit. But these are from We Are Memory Keepers, and there's two two different size holes. You can see through the top uh, so that you can see where your center where your mark is usually that you've marked for your hole. And then this part has some adjust depending on the size of eyelet that you're using. So then you just, you know, put it to the right size, put your eyelet in there, and, and that puts it in place. I have a manual thing that I use a lot too, um, and that one is a less expensive. This is just a little eyelet setter that you can also use with a hammer, and I use it on a steel block, but... Um, you know, that's just a, another little tool that you could use if you're doing the eyelids. Okay, and then just a little piece of lace. And then a uh, lined paper on the back that um, is just some ledger paper that I had. So just that. And then this is just a piece of, uh, I, I like to add in a pocket maybe two or three things. And so this is just a piece of ledger that I had coffee stained. And then I just added, um, I have a dictionary that, that the pages happen to be around eight and a half by 11, so they can fit through my printer. So I have taken, um, you'll see if you buy digital, sometimes you get a whole sheet of flowers or something. Um, here's one that's, that's butterflies. Uh, what I did for this one is I took that sheet of digitals and instead of printing it and fussy cutting them out, I just printed them on, right onto the uh, dictionary page. You could have done the same with this and then um, cut them out like little stamps. So that's just kind of another idea to um, make a cute little embellishment. So that was one pocket. And then I'm not gonna cover every every one, especially ones that are blank, that are good for writing. You know, there's a little background there, but um, I'm gonna leave that for the end user to do what they want. This one, again, this had the dedication on it, so I'm gonna leave this one blank also. It can be collaged on or added to, um, but I'm gonna leave that for the end user. This was my pocket that uh, I sewed into the signature, so I'm going to, you know, wanna do something with that. Um, I took just a piece. This little scrap was a scrap from one of um, Rachel's digitals from Roxy Creations, just a little scrap I had left, and then a little tear, torn piece of that washi tape, 
And then that's all I did to the front of that one because that was an uh, envelope printed from my digital. And then on the back side of it, I just, again, used a scrap. I went ahead and printed out, um, and maybe I will include... I might include this just for fun or something like this. You can't see the whole thing, and it's not really very creatively done. But I I collaged a bunch of my vintage hankies onto an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, and I did that just so I would have little bits that I could tear up for collage. So I might either make it a little nicer for you and put it as part of that kit, um, but that's what I, I've done here. I had printed it... Um, I think one I printed on cardstock because this feels a little thicker. But that's just a piece of a hanky and then an actual vintage stamp um, just to coordinate with that. And then I wanted to do some cards. So I did, this again is the background was one of Tracy Fox's cards. I added some lined paper that I had coffee stained and then just um, some torn bits of ephemera. This is actually, um, when I did my digital kit, I had made the cover sheet that has all the little thumb print, thumbnail for the Etsy shop. And then I scrapped it because I wanted to make a change to it after I had printed it out. But I had all these, uh, I had that sheet. So I just cut those strips and then I have all my little miniatures of my pages. So I'm just using those as ephemera. So I had cut one out and made it with my um, pinking shears. If you don't have fancy scissors, you might have um, pinking shears. These are from Fiskars. These were from my sewing stuff. And um, they're great because they're just, you know, a regular pinking shear. But if you if you use, you can either have it be this pattern or if you, you cut, if you cut once, it looks like that. And then I kind of just eyeball and go in between each of those and cut it again and it looks more like a stamp and if you do it really sloppy on purpose you can get it just to look like a deckled edge and so with one pair of scissors you can do at least three different patterns so i these are just something handy if and that's i probably use those more than any you know decorative edge one that i have Okay, so that was how I made that little stamp with a little deckled edge. And then this was a little fussy cut flowers and then one of the little butterflies. So uh, that was it for that. And then, you know, a little eyelet and lace again. So that was one little card. So if you start out, you know, using someone else's digital uh, collaged paper, you know, it could have been um, one of mine or or it could have been something like this one, you know, you start out already having a background and then just add a few things to it and you have a cute little card. So that one, and then I did another one. This one was with, um, just to show a different thing you can do. This was with a Tim Holtz piece. You can buy actual packs of cards. I think these were already cut cards of his because they have already have the lines printed on the back. Um, so I had a few of these I'm just using up. And then this was a clock face. And then instead of, you know, gluing it in the center, I like to sometimes glue things offset because maybe I'm going to put it in a side, in a pocket like this, and I want it to stick out like a tab. I like to offset it for that reason. But then don't glue the whole thing down, only glue half of it down. And then you also have a little tuck. And so this is just a little scrap of ephemera, so I'll stick that there. And I may stick a few other pieces. But then these will be good because they're little uh, to use for collage, to journal on, you know, to write on the back, or, you know, to use them to decorate more pages. And then a little, um, I used a slot punch to do this hole. And then just um, stapled on a little piece of vintage um, stretchy lace. So that's that. Nothing here on the title page. Again, a couple blank pages that I'll leave. And then I thought about, I'm going to do something here. And there's actually another card that kind of looked good. So this was, um, this is from one of mine. And maybe I'll do this while I'm here. Um, from the new kit that I'm going to be releasing soon. Uh, this was one of the cards that's a vintage postcard and a little frame. And then I put some lined paper on the back. Did it on cardstock so it's thicker. Used my round corner punch. That's another uh, must-have tool for me. 
I love this one. It's from We Are Memory Keepers. It does three sizes. This is the middle size uh, for these. But it makes it makes cards go in and out of their pockets easier to have the corners rounded. Plus, I just think it looks more finished. So I kind of liked how this sort of fit on there. And I thought I could do like a belly band and it pulls out. But then I also like that you still see the map. So I'm thinking maybe like half circles and make it like a tuck. So maybe we'll do that while I'm here. But I need a circle of some kind. And that actually might, might be kind of a nice color on that. Okay, I think what I'll do is find a punch that's a little big. The other thing that you can do here that would be kind of cute too, and I don't know that I have any, is these are also from Tim Holtz. And they're they're these die cut. They're already they're already thick. They're already die cut. Those could be a cute way to kind of hold in, you know, maybe not those, but um, you glue them down part way, and then this can come out. This is why I don't normally craft on camera because I want to try everything out. So I think I'm gonna go. Oh, that fits nicely in there. I don't know if you can see that through the window. But if I do that and then cut it in half, kind of like that. Yeah, I think I think I like that. So I'm gonna do that and then, so here I just have some scrap card stock and I'm just gonna glue this down. Any kind of glue stick, I'm using this Yoohoo. And then I'll cut that out. And then I'm gonna cut it in half. And then again, I this is just something I do because I like everything grungy. I don't like unfinished edges. So I'm gonna ink those up. And you can see the difference is just that little extra. I'll try to make a list of my favorite tools here at one point. Um, maybe when I do this video, because I'm going to have mentioned them all, so I can make a list and include them down in the description. Okay, and then I think I'll go like this. And that way, this will be like a holder for my card. I could also do it this way if I wanted. side to side, which I actually think I might like that better. So to put that on, I think I'm just gonna use my art glitter glue, and I'm just gonna glue the edge because I want it to be able to tuck. And I'm just gonna eyeball and put that there. You could even just use, you know, one side. You don't have to do both sides, but I think it'll kind of hold it in there better. Okay, and I just eyeballed that too. Hopefully it's somewhat even. And then once that dries, I might need to be careful right now, but when that dries, that'll just kind of fit in there like so. So that's kind of cute. So I'm not gonna put this in here now because I want it to dry. Um, I do think that I want something in this. You can actually, you know, cut that out and have it be like a pocket 
that you saw, you know, saw through, but because I put lined paper on the back, I think maybe a stamp, just a regular postage stamp would be cute there. So let's see if I have a postage stamp. I need to put these away. And let's see what color might look good. Any color, but I think a portrait one, a portrait one would be pretty. It's a little bright. It has some pink over here, but it's a little bright. Oh, here, this is nice. That's still a little bright. I like that one because it has the blue here, so I think I'll do that. Plus, I like the the script of that on that one too. So I'm just going to and then also I want to do this. Just to get rid of the white, it'll just make it blend in a little bit better. Just like that. And then, you know, I could do more if I wanted. I can add, but I think I'm not. This is where I'm, I'm trying to, like, less is more sort of thing. Um, because this is going to somebody else who likes to journal, junk journal. And she might want to add her own touches. So, a little card there. And then on this side, I used one of my envelopes that I printed to make a flip. So this page had, you know, a digital printing on one side. This was the table of contents page. So I took the envelope. I just chose one that I had printed on both sides. And then I needed to, I wanted to sturdy this flap up anyway. So I added another uh, piece of cardstock with some text on it. You don't have to have it be this large. It could have just been the flap side, but I knew I wanted it to be a tuck. So I just, I did make it a little bit wider. And then that way I just glued it here on these three sides. And then this again is a piece of ephemera. And then this was um, just, uh, it's just printed on cardstock, a portrait. And I've just used my distressing to age it, the edges. I do the same thing with the paper too, just to get rid of the white. So just tucked a couple things there. And then on this side, the flip side, is the envelope. I cut it down, you know, um, where the glue, the other part would glue down. I trimmed that down to make this opening a little set further back. Um, put some book page inside. So now I have, and I think there's also, yeah, book page on the inside. It just made it a little thicker, you know, to be able to hold a few things. And again, this is just a piece of plain ephemera that the end user can use to collage with or write on the back of it. Um, and then again, same thing, another piece. And I've just, you know, printed them on cheap copy paper and then used some distressing to age it down. But I want to include some things like that so she'll have, um, you know, things to tear up and collage with. And then on this is just the back side of that, the other side of that envelope, which actually would be the front side. And you can see I used dictionary page underneath before I printed it to cover up, you know, any, the address or whatever I don't want to show, then printed it. And then this is again, one of the flowers from the dictionary that I printed on dictionary page. And that was all that was done to that. I just put it on cardstock so it was thicker, rounded the corners and only glued two sides so that I would have another little tuck. And this is just a, Tim Holtz, a uh, little ephemera piece. So just put that there. Okay, and then a belly band. So you may have heard people mention what belly bands. So I, I think they can go this way or this way or wherever you want on your page. But it's just a strap kind of thing, a place to tuck things. So for this one, this was a piece of uh, when I had printed out my Etsy, you know, first sheet there, uh, cut those strips apart. 
And so I'm just used one of those because it has all my different pages. And then I stitched around it with my sewing machine and then glued it just at the two ends. Of course, I also distressed that with my vintage photo. And this I'm gonna leave because it's a, a lot of color and, and then it can be collaged on more or add, you know, written on or whatever. And then again, this is just another piece from the ephemera pack of um, that I will put the link. And then this is, um, you know, just one of my, one of the pages and it's blank. So I'm just gonna leave this another, you know, blank page, another one I'm gonna leave. This is the other side of the envelope that was sewn into the signature. So I wanted to just do a little bit to that. I didn't do anything to this side. Um, this side, I just added a piece of the rice paper uh, music sheet that I had scrap and glued that down. And then these are um, a whole bunch of alphabet. I got these at Michael's many, many years ago. They were, came in like a little notepad and it's just these cute little letters. Um, so I grabbed one. Uh, I had somebody ask me for this book. So I, uh, I took one of her monogram letters and you can see that it looks a little different than this one, even though this is kind of what it started out as. I used um, some embossing on this. That's another thing that I like to do. If I want something to pop off a page and everything's kind of all, not monochromatic, I mean, there's color here, but everything is kind of the same um, matte finish looking, nothing kind of pops out. So if I want something to stand out, one of the things I, I do, a couple things. One of them is I like this Sheer Shimmer Sparkle Spray that I use a lot. Um, so I use that sometimes. But the other thing I like to do is just use some clear, transparent embossing powder. So if you've never embossed before, there's a couple ways to do it. You see a lot of times people will do it in cards, make card making. They'll, they'll use a clear stamp. Here's my clear stamp like this, which is really dirty now, but uh, clear ink and then emboss with that. They also have these pens that you can get, and there's uh, called emboss it pen. These are from Ranger. It, it comes a set of two, clear and black, and I've used both in this um, journal. So for the black one, because I had used this music sheet, I wanted the black to be, it was a little... It was not that dark. It was, it might not have been black at all, but it might have been, but it might have just been like looking like a shadow. So I wanted it to stand out more. And then, so I used the black pen, which made it a really dark black and then embossed it. And then I used the clear pen on the rest of the C. So you can see it's all kind of shiny. Um, one thing, a tip that I just learned that I did not know is, because I hadn't done a lot of embossing, is Sometimes, especially fine details, you only want the embossing on some of the finer points and you don't want it everywhere else. But for some reason, the embossing powder will stick to other parts. Is they have a thing called anti-static bag that you can buy. It's just like a little square thing and it's anti-static. So you pounce that on your piece first before you do the embossing. And then that way, it's only gonna stick to where you put the embossing ink, okay? So what you would do, let me see if I can find a little spot and show you. Maybe I'll do this too, that's good. Okay, so if you've never embossed before, you want a piece of paper or something down, I'm gonna do it on this little pre-cut number two. I'll use the clear one, I think. So I didn't have the little anti-static thing so I went online and I found, I'll have to find where I found it so I can give her credit because now I don't remember her name, but there's there was a little video. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll find it in my history and I'll put a link down below. But it was using a sock. So I just used one of my little athletic socks. And then I just filled it, not full, but you know, it's got a bunch in there. She suggested either baby powder or cornstarch. I didn't have baby powder, but I had that gold bond, you know, for hiking, just regular powder. So I just put that in there, tied it with a rubber, rubber band. This is not part of it. And then you can just pounce that, and it's just enough to make get rid of the static. And then take your embossing pen. I'm going to use the clear one. And just color in 
where you want. Now it's clear, so you're not gonna really be able to see it. I'm only gonna do this little circle, just because I don't need to do this whole thing right now, so that you could see the difference. So if you can see the color difference, you see that's a little wet, okay? So I do it, if I'm gonna do something this big, I don't know how long that stays wet. So if it's a large area, I'll just do a part of it and then um, add the powder and then knock it off and then maybe come back and do the rest. So I'm only going to do that amount for now. You want to make sure that you put this powder back in here. I know, uh, you know, I watch a lot of Eva Bohemian Crafting. She must emboss a lot because she has actually a big Tupperware kind of bin and then she does it right in there. And then so it's so much easier, you know, than having this little thing. So maybe at some point I buy a larger quantity and have a, a nice bin. Because that way you just dip this in and shake it off. You don't have to have the paper there. So I've got my little little bit done. And then you want to use a heat gun. You don't want to use a hair dryer because the hair dryer is blowing too much. This one blows actually a little bit more than my other one. But um, you want a heat gun. You want to heat it up, but you don't really want everything blowing around. So I like to use um, tweezers or scissors or something to hold this because it's going to be hot. And then you just... I held that up so you could see it. But you can see just that quick, just heating that up melts that embossed pattern. As soon as it's cool, it's dry. So, you know, there are glossy finish things, um, glossy accents and that sort of thing, you know, to give yourself a glossy finish. If you don't want to do the whole embossing thing, these just take longer to dry. So that's instant. Okay, so that is one way to kind of enhance this. I'll finish this whole two out, uh, you know, later. But that is just if you've never embossed before. Okay, so I embossed that. And then I used my, you know, fake deckled edge to get it to the size I want and then used my antique finish. And then I'm just going to add to this one. These are just some bits and pieces. I did a little bit to this card. This was one of Tracy's, again, her pre-done bases. And then I I didn't like the flowers that were with that. It didn't really go with my thing. So I had, this was actually a photo that was in one of Rachel's um, French Chateau collages and so I just use that and then one of Tracy's labels there and then some um, lined paper on the back so it's the beginning of a card you know the end user can finish it up more if she wants or not or um, or call it done and then th these are just some um, Tim Holtz the ones that were pre-done kind of thing and then again just a piece of ephemera I printed onto tea stain paper so I'm just going to include you know some odd things like that just so she'll have or whatever and then again some blank ones this page I wanted to keep pretty simple this was the end of my first signature and I just did I actually took because I really liked it I liked that little corner thing I thought that was just screaming to be a corner tuck so I took a second one that I had printed out on cardstock and cut out just the corner rounded it like the book was and then if you can see that shiny I embossed just this purple part um, just so that it had a little bit of, you know, dec decoration to it. So that was pretty simple. I did that one by cutting out that um, piece with a much larger, you can hand cut it if you want, just use a circle, but I used this circle punch and then just cut it the shape that I needed um, for the corner. And then just a couple another little pieces of ephemera printed on um, grubby paper. And then again on this side, I did s sort of like the envelope thing, but I didn't use an envelope. So I did another side tuck. This was just with a piece of um, ephemera from that ephemera kit that I bought. It's just a bunch of different letters and things. So... Um, some of the pieces, like this one is actually this one, are larger. And so I took this piece and, you know, uh, made it thicker. I think this one I just printed on cardstock. Oh, I did. It, it looks like it may have been printed on cardstock or not. And then I just lined it with book page so it was thicker. So I just kind of folded over, you know, part of a fur flap. 
And then the other part that was here, I decided I just wanted to round it. So I just did that with scissors. And that way it's just a nice, easy tuck. I had already made this previously. Uh, and so it's, I have, you know, a stash of a few things that are made up, just a little coin envelope. So I've just added um, another piece of that ephemera inside. But I thought, I kind of liked that it was a little travel map kind of thing, because there are some mappy related things in this journal. So I thought that, that fit nicely there. And then I just took another piece. This was a scrap from one of um, Roxy Creations French Chateau. I just had a little piece and just glued that on there. Just, you know, to give it another little decoration. And then this, for the front of this, I took, these are just little photo corners that are stick on that you can buy. And I thought I'll just use that as a little tuck. And then this is from my digital kit that we used in here. And it was actually the other side of this one. If you remember, she sits about right here on it. So I thought it'd be fun to put her on this page, you know, she, since we see her somewhere else back here, here. So I just did it again, made it thicker on cardstock and then, you know, just rounded the corners. Now, if you can see, I didn't want to do too much to this, but you can see the little shine. I embossed just what would be the gems of her jewelry, um, just to kind of give it a little extra detail. And then I think, I can't tell, I think I might have also spritzed, spritzed the whole thing with just um, so a little bit of this sheer shimmer. I just like that. It just, you know, when you want something a little bit added to it, but not a lot. So she goes there. And then um, just a couple of other little pieces. You can make, um, this was a piece of Tim Holtz paper. And then um, part of one of my digitals, I think the other part that she was on here. You could see this part here. And made a little pocket for it. And then just added another one of those flowers that I had printed on, um, printed on to dictionary page. And then this is a little scrap here also from the ephemera pack. And then just another another little piece, lots of little pieces of paper, you know, just to use. And then just another little card. So just some pieces there. Okay, nothing here. I'm gonna leave that for her to collage. Same with this one, just kind of leaving some blank, blank. I mean, for how much I did, I did, it seems like I left a lot blank, but um, I think in the ones that I did, I, I put a lot in there. So then we're to the next, This we're into the second signature already here, about halfway. And I this was a pretty plain page, so I decided to go ahead and put a pocket here. Wanted something colorful. Um, this, again, if you can see behind here, this is part of one of my digitals that's used in this book. And then, again, one of the flowers on dictionary page. This is uh, one of Tracy Fox little um, pieces from her ephemera. And then I did do, the only thing I did to that is you, I don't know if you can see on camera. Let's see if it shows up. I did do some sparkle on that just to give it another something and then another little stamp. And then I just, I kind of made um, a little cluster of things and I went to my sewing machine and just sewed back and forth a few times just to give it another little texture and then glued it down to my pocket and then stitched around that, did my antique. So I just kind of made some, you know, layers on just this pocket. And then again, just a piece of ephemera. This is a piece from uh, the kit, from my kit, uh, from the uh, vintage book page kit. And then another little card. And this, I think the background is probably one of Tracy's. And then I just, um, glued on some more little pieces. Again, I embossed just the flower part of that one. And then this little scrappy thing is from, um, you know, I save all the, when I tear apart books, I save all the little um, things that come off of the uh, book binding. And so that's just a little scrap of that. So another little tag. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. And then I get to her again. And this one, because it's just kind of the feminine little part, I think. I did a piece of vintage lace 
and it's backed with a piece of vellum. I wanted to maybe have it be see-through a little bit, um, but be able to be a belly band. So by, you know, making it thicker with that vellum and then just used my art glitter glue to um, glue down just the ends. And then another little card. Um, I'm not sure the back of this one came from someone else's kit. I don't remember what, just this background. I don't remember what kit. Um, but that I use, printed on um, cardstock backed with some vintage ledger paper. And then this little embellishment, uh, it, it's changed its iteration in the final, but this was me practicing playing around with my own uh, ephemera kit. So it, that's why it's in two pieces. Just there. And then I liked, um, this is the guy that was on this one. And so I put, I wanted him on this page too. So I just used that big circle punch and cut him out in one side straight so it can fit on the edge of the page. I think he kind of needed that the way it was laid out. Um, the way I cut him because I'm, I've cut her out as a journal card. And so I had a straight edge here. So when I cut him out, I didn't mind that straight edge. I thought I'm just going to put him on the edge of the page. And then I just used a larger circle punch with a scalloped edge, um, just to give him kind of a frame around him. And then again, um, this is from my uh, vintage book page kit. And then this is part of the new kit that I, the ephemera kit, this was from a book cover that I have. And so I didn't, you know, collage on it or anything yet, because I just think she might want to do that. And that's just real cute like that. So that's plain. And then I'm now to the last, signature. Uh, this had the castle on it, just the, you know, one of my digitals. I just took one of the envelopes I had done, had this um, little piece that looked like a forest scene. So I just made a little pocket out of that. This is one of Tracy's um, cards. It comes like this. So you can add and collage on top of this. Uh, and then I just added some lined paper to the back. And then this is just a scrap, but I really liked it with this um, from uh, Rachel's kit. That way it can, you know, be used to collage and embellish. And then this is the beginning of the last signature. Uh, this is part of my digital, you know, the guy was here and then the other heart player here. So I, I used this one as a corner pocket, um, stitched, uh, it's made thicker with another layer of, um, cardstock and then just stitched on two sides, around it, this corner a little bit. I embossed her because you see how washed out everything else is? I just thought, decided I needed her to look more like a focal point. So I used that clear pen and just embossed this girl in the front. And then this is a scrap from um, Rachel's kit, front chateau kit. And this also is one of her um, books that I've made into a card that'll get collaged. So I just like that there. And then one of Tim Holtz little pieces. So these are just, you know, kind of basic pieces that are here, but she'll have so much fun, you know, adding to and, and collaging on, you know, and journaling on. Um, this was, this is part of the new kit. This is a card I made using that. So you can see that book background I used. This was a scrap from one of Rachel's scraps. Um, this is, I think, from part of this same kit page that I'm creating, and then that portrait. And then I just, instead of backing with lined paper, I actually took a piece of vintage book front page, you know, that's a little thicker, and just glued that on. This, um, again, this belly band was made with one of um, the French Chateau, one of Roxy's uh, pages uh, that I like there for that. And then again, this was the other envelope that I sewed into the signature. So it's been lined with dictionary page. And otherwise, I haven't done anything to the front of it. It was a window envelope, and I had already, before I printed it, put this book page on here to you know cover up some writing I didn't want to see. This piece here is from Rachel's um, French Chateau ephemera kit. And then this piece in the back is a piece from my new kit that I made to coordinate with that. And then also on the back, um, this is part of that same digital page with just some room to write 
on some coffee stained ledger. So it's a pocket. I'm going to make a card for this too. I haven't done that yet, but you know, it's a card that's a pocket that you can write on and that'll go in here. And then you see something pretty through the little window. And then you still see something nice from the back. So I can do some more decorating on here. This is, you know, I'm getting kind of hopping around. This is um, another little flip. This was a piece of ledger paper. I didn't want to cover it all up because you can write on it, but I just wanted to add to it. So this was a piece from one of Rachel's digitals. I just thought it looked nice as a little, it was a scrap I had. And then this was the little part that I had cut off. You know, when you ever you save all your little scraps, when I cut this uh, scalloped circle out, I needed to cut that little bit off. So I just used it as a little, a little tuck to close that. Nothing here. This is an envelope I had mentioned, you know, in the last video that if you want to add more envelopes and not glue them down because I want to leave this as writing space, you can hinge them in. So I used a piece of my uh, washi tape with that I printed on rice paper. On one side, here's the ruler. And then the other side, this was from the end paper. Um, so I already had done this envelope um, previously. It was one that I printed a while back um, with some different kits. Um, and then I had this other little corner one from an envelope that I had already decorated. You know, it was something that was in one of my little boxes. Um, but I liked it all together. So I went ahead and just glued it to the front of this one. And then this is, again, that part, that other part from my, from him that I cut off here. But I made it a, a, a tag that's a pocket also. I don't have anything in it yet, but, um, you know, it can have a little note or something in it too. So that one can fit here. I still need to make a tag for in here. That. And then this is the other side of that envelope. I haven't done anything to it at all, and I may or may not. Um, but this is another piece from my vintage book collection. And then this was a tag that I had already made. Um, just with some scraps out of my scrap box, I did this one at Studio B. I think I did a video where I, I made a few tags. So I just thought that one looked good in here. The nice thing is... When you kind of have a color palette where there's a lot of color like this, you can take, you know, anything from anywhere and it looks, you know, it looks good in another area. You know, she can move stuff around wherever she wants, but it all kind of, you know, goes together. You know, you can grab things from different spots and they all coordinate. So um, that's kind of fun. And then let's see where I'm at here. The very end, just this. So I have made another little spot. This again was from my digital. This is from the new digital I'm gonna have, the ephemera. It's a book spine. Um, so I need to do maybe a card here. And otherwise that's the end. So I'm really close to being finished. Um, but I wanted to show you what I had done so that if you've continued and you're working along, you kind of have some ideas about how to use these. Um, because the kits that I have started, you know, you can cut them in different ways, you know, and use them. These are all part of that, you know, that bit. You can cut this here or have a larger tag or make this a little booklet, you know, different things. So that's kind of the fun part and the part that takes me a lot of time as I try things out. So, you know, maybe as you do this, you can grab... You know, my kit, if you've purchased that one, and then maybe some other ones that you have that might coordinate. So I'll put links down below for everything and get to work finishing on my closure and the rest of this. So hopefully the next video will be the finish, finish of this. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.